Hello everyone, I'm Renee Meredith from Exploration Group and once again it's time for the audio version of the Exploration Weekly Newsletter, this time for the week of November 6th, 2020. Hello as well to our newsletter team of Julius Ramos and Heidi So, and thank you for all of your effort each and every week. And now, the news. Music publishers ask CRB to set interim rates, saying further delay may lead to a free-for-all. The National Music Publishers Association and the Nashville Songwriters Association International have filed a motion asking the Copyright Royalty Board to set interim rates at the current levels. The news comes after the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals decided to officially remand George Johnson on October 26th and the digital services Spotify, Amazon, Pandora, and Google appealed the CRB rate determination back to the CRB judges. The determination would see the headline rate for music publishing royalties to rise 44%, from 10.5% to 15.1% of revenue during the 2018 to 2022 term. The appeals court vacated the CRB's adopted rate structure and percentages and remanded the proceedings back to the CRB. With that, the NMPA and the NSAI motion asked the CRB to keep the current rate structure in place to avoid significant confusion and disruption in the mechanical licensing market and harm to the copyright owners during the period pending the remand rate determination. Without an interim rate, the NMPA and NSAI say they fear there will be a free-for-all, with services selecting rates unilaterally. Hypnosis Songs buys Cobalt Music Catalogs, 33,000 songs for $323 million. This week, Hypnosis Songs Fund Limited acquired the Cobalt Music Copyrights Fund 1, which includes the song catalogs of such writers as Lindsey Buckingham, Steve Winwood, The B-52s, 50 Cent, George Benson, Bonnie McKee, Nelly, and Squillex. In total, the 42 catalogs comprise over 33,000 songs written by over 1,500 songwriters. Hypnosis Song says it is paying $323 million and funding the acquisition through a combination of equity and borrowings from its recently expanded revolving credit facility. Moreover, the net publisher's share grew 6% to $18 million in 2019, which it says translates into 18.3 times NPS multiple. Over the summer, Hypnosis Songs, which is listed on the London Stock Exchange, raised some £420 million in two equity tranches, first raising £236.2 million in July and another £190 million on September 21st. With the Cobalt acquisition, that brings Hypnosis Songs portfolio to 117 catalogs with 57,000 songs, with an acquisition value of $1.5 billion, according to the company. Spotify adds artists and label input to personalized recommendation process. Spotify announced in a blog post Monday that it will add the input of artists and labels to its personalized recommendation process, enabling them to promote a new single, for example, over songs that Spotify's algorithm might have suggested otherwise. In this new experiment, artists and labels can identify music that's a priority for them, and our system will add that signal to the algorithm that determines personalized listening sessions. This allows our algorithms to account for what's important to the artist, perhaps a song they're particularly excited about, an album anniversary they're celebrating, a viral cultural moment they're experiencing, or other factors they care about. The artists and labels will receive a lower royalty rate for this service. According to the announcement, it will be a promotional recording royalty rate for streams in personalized listening sessions where Spotify provides the service. Artist manager grouping calls for pan-European debate on the streaming business model. The European Music Managers Alliance, EMMA, has called for a pan-European debate on some of the key issues of streaming and how monies generated by the streaming services are shared out across the music industry. According to the trade group, the ongoing streaming boom is not the cause for celebration it should be. Commercial inefficiencies alongside outdated licensing and contractual practices mean too little of this revenue is reaching artists and other music makers, says Ema, highlighting three issues with the streaming business in particular. On the recording side, legacy artist contracts where terms were written for the CD era are being applied in the digital age. 
On the song side, data issues mean that not all monies can be accurately allocated to the songs that have been actually streamed. And finally, the perceived problems with the current service-centric system for royalty distribution. EMA also calls on European governments to properly implement last year's EU copyright directive and call for a unified response to the wider challenges posed by COVID-19. SOCAN revenues grew 8.2% in 2019, but payments to songwriters and publishers shrunk by 6%. According to the 2019 financial results posted on November 4th by SOCAN, the Canadian Performing Rights Society generated revenues of 405.6 million Canadian dollars, approximately 310.5 million US dollars in 2019. This is up 8.2% compared with 2018. On the other hand, the body's payouts to members totaled 296 million Canadian dollars, or 226.6 million US dollars, a 6% decline compared with the 315 million Canadian dollars distributed in 2018. According to SOCAN, this disparity was due primarily to what it describes as a steep learning curve required for the company's newly deployed technology to process international and television income. Furthermore, SOCAN's 2019 results were a 10% year-over-year increase in domestic collections of 315.1 million Canadian dollars and a 2.2 year-over-year increase in international royalty collections of 90.5 million Canadian dollars. SOCAN also generated 86 million Canadian dollars in revenue from digital sources. This is up 37.6% while reproduction rights collections increased to 12 million Canadian dollars. Collecting Society APRA reveals COVID-19 impact on royalties. Australian Collecting Society APRA is the latest PRO to quantify the effect that the COVID-19 pandemic has had on its collections and thus on its payouts to songwriters and publishers. The November APRA royalty payment overall will be down 11% compared to the same quarter last year, it explained. November's payment is for royalties from the second quarter of this year, the first full quarter of the pandemic for Australia. APRA's royalty payouts from digital services grew by 27% year on year, but royalties from commercial TV fell by 20%. Commercial radio revenues additionally fell by 57%, and concert royalty payments fell by 24%. From our random rambling section this week, forgive me for the earworm I am about to deliver. Baby Shark, I know you know how it goes, has surpassed Despacito to become the all-time most viewed video on YouTube. At the time of this recording, the Baby Shark video has racked up 7,077,868,830 views since it was uploaded in June of 2016. Despacito at this moment has 7,044,555,169 views. YouTube has yet to officially acknowledge this, but this is one set of numbers that we can be pretty confident in this week. Speaking of numbers and confidence, here's my small morsel for you guys. This week has been insanely stressful for almost all Americans, no matter who you voted for. I just want to remind everyone that the sun's coming up tomorrow, no matter what the vote count is, and we've all got to work together to achieve life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. So let the big guys do their thing. Right now, I for one have faith that the result will be honest, no matter what it is. Patience and kindness is going to go a long way over the next few days and into next week. So let's do our best to be good humans. That's all for me this week. Thank you all for listening, and I'll speak to you all again next week. And don't forget, please be kind to each other.